So this face site, the Duke face site, was developed in the early 90s and uh, in a, this pine plantation. So it's been in operation you know, since 1994. We've got researchers, uh, faculty, research technicians, postdocs, graduate students. We have folks from Europe, from Australia, um, uh, from Asia. A lot of different people collaborating on different aspects of research to try to learn how forests are going to grow in the future environmental conditions of higher carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. As background, we know that carbon dioxide levels are rising in the atmosphere, and that's because of uh, burning fossil fuels of, of energy demands. So since the Industrial Revolution, CO2 levels have been steadily rising. Um, Pre-Industrial Revolution, CO2 levels were around 280 parts per million in the atmosphere globally. They're around 390 parts per million now. That rise has occurred just in the last couple of hundred years. And so with a rise in atmospheric CO2 and with plants dependent on carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to make sugars from photosynthesis to make food, we want to find out how changing atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide are going to affect the growth of a forest. Could a forest like this offset that rise that we're, of CO2 that we're putting in? And the answer is no, as we, we're finding out. But the goal of this project is to find out how does that rise in atmospheric CO2 affect the growth of the forest? Where is the carbon allocated after the sugars are made in photosynthesis? How much of it goes to making new leaves, new wood, new roots? How much of it might become um, sequestered as long-term complex organic molecules in the soil and therefore stored for a long time versus a mid-term storage in wood or a shorter-term storage in leaves? And then how long does it take um, for that carbon to turn over again and go back into the atmosphere as CO2 as, the, as it's decomposed or respired? We're standing in the area where we did a practice harvest in June. We took down several trees and dug up the root balls of a couple of them to get an estimate of how much effort, time, and energy, and manpower it was going to take to, uh, to do our big harvest of our face site. And this is the area that we're standing in now. The tables were used to sieve the soil that came out of the root pit so we could extract roots and rocks to get an estimate of rock volume as well as root biomass uh, underground. Most of the roots are in the top 30 to 60 centimeters of soil, but then we've got coarse roots that go down much deeper than that as well, although the main uh, bulk of the roots, once they got 70 to 100 centimeters down, you hit this really hard clay and they don't penetrate that nearly as well. So, you know, by far the bulk of the roots are above a meter. We are turning off the carbon dioxide at the end of this month, so in just a little over a week. The CO2 will go off for good as we're going through this big harvest and cutting down half of each plot to measure how much tree growth actually occurred and to test um, our models based on the measurements we've been doing all along. In terms of the future, we, we are going to continue our measurements for the next two growing seasons on the unharvested halves of each plot. After that, who knows? There are several, we have several ideas, but that will depend on writing some grants and getting some funding to uh, carry it into the future from there.